as usual, when you're working with collage, get out everything that you think you might conceivably need. I've got my watercolors, ink, bleed proof white, a little sprayer, a white ink pen, gel pen, a couple of kinds of glue, some tissue paper, um, matte medium, and a set of colored uh, markers, fine point. So I've already done a fair amount of this one, and it may be almost through, but we will uh, add just a little bit, I think. You can collage right over something that you don't feel is particularly successful. I wasn't wild about how this landscape turned out, and so I'm just going to soften the lines here and there and do some blending. This is uh, a watercolor pencil, obviously. I've found some turquoise tissue paper that I think will be fun over this. So this time we're going to use um, ooh, matte medium, which is kind of thick, and coat the paper quickly. I'm going to just pull it, pop it up first. It's more interesting. It'll get a wonderful texture. And press it into place. Don't worry if it overlaps the page edges. We'll fix that later. And fasten it down on the top. It probably would be good to put something underneath this too, so you don't attach it to pages underneath, but I didn't think of that till just now. So I'm being sort of careful. Uh, a little bit more under there. Oh, and I see the color of the uh, tissue paper is transferring, so I'm going to pull that piece off. Oh, it looks frosty. It looks like winter. Yep, this is going to be fun. I'm inspired now. I've dug out some of my white pins to play with. I have no idea how they're going to work on this, but we'll see. And it isn't quite dry, so it's kind of scraping through. But it does look like a winter scene to me, so... I'm going to add some branches. And it will be even nicer once I let this dry completely, I'm pretty sure. Let's try one of the smaller pens and see if they'll work. I'm going to test them first, though, because sometimes they don't want to start. Okay, that one's not bad. This one's better. Okay. You just kind of let it speak to you. Um, when you're doing this kind of work, there's no need to plan it completely ahead. Just kind of play with it. Oh, it does work much better where it's dry, so we will, in fact, let it get completely dry. I've found some white tissue, too, and I'm going to lay it in using a gloss medium this time. This gives kind of a misty, blowing snow effect, and I'm liking the texture that it gives. Rubber stamps can add another element to your journal pages. You can have a lot of fun with them. You can get uh, commercial ones like these mounted on uh, wood, or you can cut your own, and you can combine them if you wish, as I did here. This is the large one, and this is the smaller one with um, the little commercial stamp used on the side. It makes a fun effect, and, and you can pick any stamp or symbol that um, appeals to you or is meaningful to you and carve your own. If you're working on a, a darker colored paper or a toned paper or a paper you've you've textured as I have here with the tissue paper, you can use a number of opaque mediums to uh, do your drawing with. This is a couple of gel pens. Different ones will work differently, so try them out. Um, this is a wide calligraphy marker that I used on the tree here and the smaller branches with one of these. Um, you can use a bleed-proof white or a, 
a white or opaque um, acrylic paint works really well. The little bristle brush, pouncing with it and then spreading it around with my finger. So just be as creative and as ready for surprises as you can be. It's a lot of fun that way. And since we've talked about the um, rubber stamps, I'm going to use this one. It's really best to have a, a brayer to spread your color on uh, your, your stamp, but since I don't out here, I'm using a paintbrush. Ooh, let's slap it down quickly while we've got something on it. Hold it for a few minutes to, or for a few seconds anyway, to uh, make sure that you get a good bond. I'm pushing down fairly hard. Oh, okay, that's nice. It took. I believe I'll use the little commercial one too. And just kind of add another little element here. And perhaps here now that it's got part of the paint off of it. Oh my, I'm liking this a lot. The uh, Celtic swirls seem to feel like winter winds to me. Just a little bit more up here. You can be as creative as you like because it's your, your artwork. No one else needs to tell you what to do or in what order. Just have fun, express yourself, and enjoy yourself. Sometimes it's fun to use your little sprayer to spray color with. So I've got a bit of water in this one. I'm going to pour a little bit more out and mix up another nice strong blue. This is Thalo. And put some right in the water. You can see I've made it fairly strong, and I'm still sticking with the blue color for the wintry effect. And let's just spray a little on. Oops. Not a whole lot of effect, but a little. Oh, and it kind of separates on the um, uh, polymer medium, which is interesting too. Let's add just a little bit of spatter and see how that looks with the stronger blue while we can. And this time I'm just going to apply it by tapping my brush against another brush. We'll see how that works. Oh yeah, that's nice. I often like a little text in my journals, and this one had just a little bit, or on my collage pages. So I'm going to add a little more here. Uh, this particular water brush really normally makes a good um, uh, lettering brush, so we shall see if I can make it do it this time. It's working pretty well. We'll call this Wintry Day. Just a bit more spatter up here for Unity, echoing the phthalo blue down in the corner. Oh, now it's making like little snowflake effects. That's pretty. I believe I'll try a little of the uh, bleed proof white for that as well. I'll need to mix that up a little bit to thin it, which you probably can't see off camera. And let's just add a little bit of white spatter while that's wet.
Another interesting thing you can do with your little sprayer that you have put some paint in is to spray around something natural or anything you like actually and we'll let that dry and see what we have. Maybe add just a bit of stronger spatter for more effect. But before it dries completely, I've decided to go back in with some lines on a bamboo brush and kind of pull the paint around, just following the veins of the leaf. And I can also scratch through the paper, scratch through the wet wash, and that will uh, bruise the paper and make some darker lines while it's still quite wet. See how much darker that gets? Masking tape is extremely useful stuff. This is painter's masking tape, which is a little less tacky. And you can use it for a mask, needless to say. Either cut or tear shapes from it. Maybe a window or a ball for the sun, a circle, or tear it in strips and attach those. They have a more interesting shape to them sometimes because they don't have such mechanical edges. You can use this for all sorts of things like uh, picket fences and the edge of a horizon, whatever you need masked off. I'm going to paint right over this very quickly this time. Making sure it's strong enough. And let's use the sprayer too to give us some uneven edges. As you can see, I've added a little bit of spatter to this one too. I seem to really like spatter. And you need to let the tape dry completely, the wash dry completely, because if you don't, when you pull the tape away, you're liable to damage your paper. So we'll just start an edge and pull it back at an acute angle to your paper, and that's less likely to cause a problem. See how beautiful and white that leaves that? some interesting edges. It's a very nice resist effect. And then of course you can go back in. And as you could see, I couldn't resist just a little bit more with that bamboo pen. It's a lot of fun and makes nice linear effects.